So when you are boondocking, are you going to rely on engine power to charge your battery or go all solar? Well, why not take advantage of both options? In this video, we are going to show you how to do it yourself. Hi, I'm Sherry with Freedom in a Can. Meet Lotus, our 2015 Nissan Frontier, which serves as our tow vehicle for our 1957 Sportcraft travel trailer. Now, Lotus is also our gear garage, and it also stores our cooler. Now, in our tiny little vintage camper trailer, we do not have room for a modern size refrigerator. And somehow, for the past eight and a half years, we have lived with a standard cooler with ice and a dry bag. So this is a huge upgrade for us. Now this project involves installing an Iceco VL45 cooler. Now they call it a cooler, but it's truly a 12 volt refrigerator with a full compressor and a five year warranty. Now this is gonna be powered by a Renogy 50 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery, which is gonna be charged via this amazing device, which is a dual input DC to DC charger. Now what it does is it boosts the charge coming from your truck's alternator while you're driving. And when you're camped and stationary, it also accepts a solar panel charge. In addition to all of that, when the service battery is full, it reverses that charge and sends it back to the starting battery so you are never left with a dead car battery when you're boondocking. So as educators, we like to frame all of our articles and videos for the DIY beginner because we'd love to empower people. Now there's a lot of steps to this project, but stick with us because it's all gonna come together to power our cooler or any application that you may need to live out your off-grid road life dreams. Let's dive into the parts and the tools that you will need. So this is the overview of the parts for the project from the input side to the output. And here's a basic diagram of all the components that are involved in this project that we got from Renogy. For a complete list with links to every product, check out the description below. From the starting battery, we'll be fusing this with an ANL 40 amp fuse. And because we're going to be going about 16 feet from the starting battery back to uh, the, the dual input DC charger, we're using this 4 AWG gauge wire. We could have gotten away with six AWG uh, because of that distance. The secondary input will be the solar panel input. This is going to be fused from the 100 watt panel that we have. If you have a variable voltage alternator, also known as a smart alternator, you're going to need to install this ignition signal wire. This is a fuse tap that we're going to use to connect that wire, and this will go into the fuse box in the passenger compartment. All right, now let's talk about the output side. So we've got a positive output from the battery charger. We're going to use another ANL 40 amp fuse, and we'll be connecting that via 8 gauge wire from the fuse to the positive terminal on the battery. The negative ground is a common negative and neutral ground, so we'll be, we'll be grounding all of, the, all of the parts, the starting battery, the um, service battery, as well as the final output. To run the cooler, we're going to be installing this 12-volt utility outlet. That will connect directly to the battery, and then we're just going to use the 12-volt adapter cable from the cooler to give it power. To monitor the whole system, we're going to be using the DC to DC RMS monitoring system. This will monitor both the starting battery as well as the service battery as well as all of our charging parameters. This is a new piece of equipment from Renogy and we're kind of excited to give it a, a new test. So many folks think that you need a lot of different tools in order to do a DIY solar powered system, but honestly you just need some basic ones that you probably have in your garage or can borrow from a friend. So let's take a look at the parts that we're going to be using today. Got a socket set, cordless power drill and drill bits, an adjustable crescent wrench. A set of crescent wrenches is good to have as well. Some wire crimpers, wire cutters, 
wire strippers, a Phillips head screwdriver, a utility knife, as well as a voltmeter. And then it's always good to have a variety of parts and pieces on hand in case you lose something or something breaks. You'll definitely need some terminal connectors and some electrical tape. And it's always important to have some zip ties on hand at a variety of different sizes. And that's about it. Let's get started. So the very first step we're gonna do is we're gonna pull our charging cable from the starting battery along the chassis and back through a drain hole in the truck bed. It's our first step, but it's also our last step because we're never ever going to connect this line to the positive terminal until everything is connected and hooked up. If you connect power to any battery charger, solar battery charger or a DC to DC battery charger without connecting to the service battery, it'll actually damage the unit. So I'm just gonna attach this ANL fuse here to the top of this relay and um, fuse box. There's enough play in the wire connecting to the, the battery terminal so that we can still get access to this. And I'm just gonna use industrial two-sided tape. seeing a lot of this throughout the project. So I fished our four gauge cable down through the engine compartment to be sure to avoid any exhaust um, components or anything else that might be a turning, a moving component. You wanna keep that well away from any of those parts. And along the chassis here, I discovered an electrical uh, conduit that's got all the electrical going back to the, um, to the back of the vehicle. And that's a perfect place to run this cable alongside and to zip tie it along as you go. Now, we're not gonna be able to make it in just one run of this eight foot cable, so we're gonna to have to put these two together, and I'm just gonna use a bolt and some electrical insulation to insulate the heck out of that, so we'll make one good run. So Hutch already drilled a pilot hole through from the bottom and I'm just going to drill from the top here and open that hole up a little bit so we can fish that 4 gauge wire through. This is some wood that we used for an interior project in the trailer and we're going to use it to mount the components to the inside of the truck bed. And I found these little corner pieces which came with the ice co cooler shipping materials and they're going to make the perfect little supports for the battery to make a little bracket. I'm excited about reducing, reusing and recycling. Strong stuff. using these stainless steel screws. So I've made a little battery bracket here on the top of the wheel well inside the truck bed and I'm going to slide the battery right in there and I'm gonna strap it on down. There we go, sweet. Now we're ready to start hooking up all of the components and all the electronics. So I'm hooking up the positive wire coming from the starting battery. 
to the, it's called the alternator positive terminal, but it's really connected to the starting battery, which is then charged by the alternator. And I'm just tightening it up with the screwdriver, but I'll, I'll give it another snug with the socket. So I'm just going to connect the ignition signal wire here to the port. And I'm going to connect it to the little black wire that I pulled along the chassis, which goes into the fuse box in the passenger compartment. I'm just going to use a little butt connector here. Crimp it on the other side. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is hook up the ANL fuse to the positive output on the battery charger. And uh, we're going to mount this right here, and we're going to use the old tape method. We'll try and manage these wires uh, once we get everything installed. So now we're going to ground the charger and everything will come to this neutral, this common neutral ground. I'm going to use this cable and just sort of eyeball it a little bit. I'm going to ground it to this bolt here on the uh, frame. I'm also going to go ahead and make a, that'll work there, a ground that'll go just from here uh, to the battery, which is right there. So that's going to be a pretty short, it's going to be a pretty short piece. It's going to go like that. Obviously, we're going to tighten it down. Okay, so now we're going to hook up the red from the fuse to the battery. Positive lead. As soon as we touch this down here, we should get, start to see the unit come on. And again, I'll tighten that down just a little bit. So the units come on, and we need to select the battery type. Yeah, so the battery type indicator for a lithium iron phosphate. It's going to be blue. So there's a little button back here. Okay, now we're at the point of the project where we are going to install the 12 volt utility port uh, that is going to be the receiver for the cord for the ISCO cooler. And we determined that this would be a good location for it, keep it nice and out of the way, but also close enough to the outside that we can easily reach in and go ahead and unplug this as necessary. So we're going to use the Gorilla Tape uh, as well as screws to secure this to the wall. And then we'll go ahead and wire this into both the charger as well as the battery. Alright, let's 
give it a test. And the strength test. Is it going to stay on the wall multiple times? Yes. Nice. So before we do any further wiring, we're going to make sure that the ANL fuse is disconnected so there's no power going to the unit. You can see the lights went off, so we're clear here. And we're going to go ahead and attach the ground wire to the utility port. And get a feel for how long that wire needs to be to reach the negative uh, terminal here. We're going to hook up the positive wire from the utility port for the cooler to the service battery uh, via a 15 amp inline fuse. So we'll need to connect this to the positive terminal on the battery. Once again, we are working with our ANL fuse disconnected here. A little bit of wiggle room here. The next thing to do is to install the wire coming from the solar panel to the DC to DC charger. So this is the female end and we're going to be connecting this to the input. And then we will also be connecting the male end to the common ground. So the wire coming in from the solar panel is going to run through this 15 amp inline fuse to the solar panel input here. And then the male end is going to run from the solar panel to this common ground and will be attached with a ring terminal. So in connecting the inline fuse to the solar panel wire, we wanted to use a butt connector here, but we couldn't find a dual gauge butt connector that was appropriately sized. So we went ahead and just used a standard wire nut to do this. Not as sexy, but hey, it's going to be hidden under here. Nobody's going to see it, and we're just going to tape the heck out of it, make sure it doesn't wiggle around. MC4 connectors on the back of the panel. Then it was in there nice and snug until they snap. And then we've got a 20 foot extension cord that we'll be using so we can place the solar panel in the sun whenever we need to. And then we will connect these MC4s into the whole system. Moment of truth. I want that red light to come on on the charge controller. There it comes. Yay! We did it. Because we have a variable voltage alternator, we are going to be installing a fuse tap in the fuse compartment in the passenger side of the car. 
and that is going to be connected to the ignition signal wire that runs from here all the way back to the DC to DC charger. So we have chosen an appliance um, and I pulled the fuse on that which is attached to our mirrors. So this is something that is not on when the car is off. So that is important. And we're going to replace this little fuse with the fuse tab. And the way that we're going to do that is use this butt connector, attach it to the wire here that we previously pulled. And we had done this because we just recently installed a backup camera for the truck and pre-pulled a wire through here. So we set ourselves up for success. We'll just connect that in and then just put the fuse tap right into the fuse socket for the mirrors. Am I on it? We are so excited. We're on nearly the last step of this project, and I am just gonna be tightening down the nuts on the ANL fuse here that's connected to, or will be connected to the starter battery here in a moment. The final piece of the project is to install this RMS, which is a battery monitoring system. So we are just going to connect this via some Gorilla Tape to the wall. And we have mounted it inside of just a standard plastic electrical box um, just to protect the back a little bit. And we've decided that right about here is a good spot for it. And this is great because it's on a wire that is connected to the DC to DC charger just via an ethernet cable. So we've just got it running back here, plugs in on this side of the DC to DC charger and it is monitoring through this charge controller. We are so excited to be at the end of this project. We have installed a Renogy dual input DC to DC charger. We have it hooked up to the starting battery. We have it hooked up to the solar panel. We have a lithium iron phosphate battery. We've got a utility port, a fuse tap. We have everything fused and grounded. And now the moment of truth. Does the ice co-cooler run? So let's plug this baby in and see how she does. Plugged in. Woohoo! We've got power. Look at that. And just in time because it is in the mid to high 80s here in the desert and we need some cool drinks. So excited. Thanks for watching. So let's take a look at this project one more time from front to back. So I hope you enjoyed the video and learned a lot. As you can see, that dual input DC to DC charger truly is the best of both worlds, allowing you to use engine power as well as solar power. So whether you live in a van, motorhome, travel trailer, or fifth wheel, it's the perfect thing to add to your system. And as a matter of fact, if you're not using both, then you're missing out on some easy power. If you'd like to receive 10% off Renogy products or 12% off Iceco, please use our affiliate link and promo codes in the comments below. We'll see you on the road.